All right, I'll, keep, I'll let you take it from there. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for braving our monsoon weather. My name is Cindy DiCecco. I'm an, a faculty member here at Yavapai College and the Art Gallery Director. This is Diane Silver, and we're so lucky to have her exhibiting here tonight, along with Shelley Heffler. But Diane's going to give her talk first. And maybe before you start, would you welcome questions during the talk? Do you want people to save their questions? How do you want this to go? I can do it either way. Either way. If somebody so, has a compelling question <laughs> like this, they can just ask. All right. If not, afterwards, I'm very happy okay. to answer well, anything. Well, wonderful. So please, tell us about your work and your inspiration. OK, thank you. Well, my work is called The Language of Memory. And I am so very happy to be here. And I want to thank Christine Sutherland, I want to thank everybody at Yavapai College Art Gallery for um, just putting together and displaying this absolutely wonderful show. And I'm so delighted to meet Shelley, my other half in this, in this show, because I think our work really works together and speaks to, speaks to each other. Um, I think memory is something that we all think about. And I think it's been a subject of art, film, literature, and we all have that situation where we're with a friend or a spouse or a relative, and we remember something from the past, and then suddenly we realize we both have very, very different recollections of what transpired. And so I began to do some research on this and find that memory is always evolving, it's always changing. And I'll talk a drop more about that, but I was just going to mention in terms of literature, I mean, even books and films like Harry Potter, what he's most afraid of in one of the episodes is that his memories are going to be stolen from him. And I think all of us have that moment when suddenly we forget a name or we forget something, because we're all very defined by our memories. They make up who we are. Um, and just I'll mention one other book that I thought was very interesting in dealing with this issue of memory that is called The Buried Giant by Ishiguro. And it talks about a mist descending on this land and it's robbing all the people of their memories. And it raises issues. How do we know that we love the person we live? Because we can't remember all those little things that happened. So, being interested in this subject, I read some scientific research and realized that we don't store a snapshot of an event, whether it's a good event or an unhappy event. Our brain instead encodes hundreds or thousands of little details in a myriad of places all around our brain. So when we go to access a memory, our hippocampus, which is the place that pulls everything together, um, it gets all these bits and pieces of code. Sometimes it gets them a little confused. And it also changes the memory in light of our emotional state at the time that we access the memory, and also in terms of our cognitive state and so many things. So knowing this, I wanted to work in a visual way with this concept. So in this particular piece, which I titled Pieces of Water because of the very elusive nature, the very ephemeral nature <coughs> of um, memory, and I worked loosely, abstractly from the memory, and I worked on large pieces of paper, and I composed something that I liked, and then I took that leap of faith to cut it up, put it on panels, and try to reassemble it the way our brains would access a memory. And for me, the interesting thing about this piece is that it has the potential to be constantly rearranged like a memory. Um, it also embodies just a few of the themes that emerge in a lot of my work. Um, I'm very interested in using language and text as a visual element in my work, so you can certainly see that in this piece as well as in many of the pieces that I do. And I, I generally use the words and text more for the aesthetic quality, the beauty of the mark making, as opposed to necessarily communicating something specific. Although I do have some pieces 
that I've done, and one I showed in a little TV show today, um, that is a little more directive and uh, has the word one is a piece that talks about toys and what are toys for children, and another one, nest we for children. Um, so basically, words and writing are a theme that's in my work, and also mark making is something I, I'm very interested in, whether it's broad gestural marks or more delicate work. And so many of the pieces are about trying to capture moments in time. And some may be graffiti-like, um, the piece over there that's titled Writing on the Wall. And you, know, you can see some of my themes with writing and letters. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into um, some of the things that I've been thinking about when I developed this particular body of work. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer. Yes? What is your background? Is it graphics or? No, or my, my background is a little different than many mm -hmm. artists. I actually was a practicing lawyer. And right. so I worked with words. <coughs> and, and I guess that was my medium in a sense. But I was always an artist long before being an attorney. And so I did that continuously, um, working on my art, but still paying the bills with uh, handling people's cases. Okay, thank you. Yes. There, um, I love the topic of uh, memories and writing and all of that as well. Um, and I'm wondering, out of curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, where were you with your art as you came into this particular topic? How did you get here? Okay, prior to doing this particular body of work, I did um, another body of work that I called The Language of Solitude. And that emerged when I ended up spending five weeks in Buenos Aires. I was by myself and with the intent that I would work on my art with no preconceived idea of what I would do. And I would take some tango lessons, <laughs> which I also did. Um, but being in a, in a country, and I didn't speak Spanish at the time, I learned some as I was there, where everything is foreign to you. You can't understand, they can't understand you. And I lived in a neighborhood, in an apartment. I found that the work that was emerging was writing words and then doing layers of marks through them. So I had done work with words that, um, precursor to this particular work, but it was much more delicately done. And you could read an occasional word here and there, and the idea was just that hopefully someone would respond in their own way to whatever that word might be. In this piece, I like how you put these small yellow spots to balance, or what was your well, I also work very spontaneously and intuitively. And you know, when you're working on a piece, you just look and sometimes you feel like that's what it needs. <laughs> and you just, you know, take the chance and suddenly put in that color or um, that mark or whatever seems to be just the right thing. And I'll, I'll mention just one more thing. A lot of what I do involves layering, so that there's somewhat of a history to the piece. And I think in this piece over here that's called The Beauty of Imperfection, as you look at it, you, you can kind of see some of the history of the piece. And you know, I will add things, I will subtract things, expose things, erase things. Um, so that's another method of how I work. How do you know it's finished? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to ask. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an absolutely good question because sometimes you're not sure and sometimes you put a piece aside and you have to live with it for a while and then you just sort of decide, I think it's finished. I don't think there's anything else I can do. And then on occasion, you do something else to it and you realize that it just doesn't work. <laughs> a couple of those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. This was all one piece. Yeah. Right. And how did it feel to you when you wrote it about? Well, 
and at first, of course, as an artist, it's you know somewhat destroying what you've done. So it's a little bit of a scary feeling because you have this concept, this idea of how you think it will, you know, work or not work. But you have to try, and you you know do something a little outside of your comfort zone. So um, you know some pieces, as you can see, and, it, and I was trying to work with this whole idea of memory. So some pieces would lead together the way they probably were, were drawn and painted. And other pieces are broken up. They're not precisely um, the way they were at the moment that I made them. Now, is this, your, is this how the piece went? Or when you cut them up, did you move them around? Oh, I, I moved them around. OK, so it's not yeah, the piece that you saw. It. Yeah, it wasn't, no, it wasn't the original piece that I did. So it was both first coming up with a piece that I felt, okay, I like that, I like the light and dark, I like the rhythm, the flow, and then cutting it up and not knowing whether I'd be able to put the pieces together in any way that I would like it. But then as I did it, I found um, that you could arrange it in different ways and, you know, decide that you wanted to put up nine pieces here, <laughs> you know, other pieces up there. And it says all acrylics. Yes, I, I mean, it's acrylic, there's conto crayon, there's graphite, there's charcoal, so there's a variety of the, yeah, in terms, terms of paint. It's yeah, it's all acrylic piece, and this is what I've been working with. Just so inspiring. Oh. What year did you do that? This is recent. I did it a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, first time I showed it was this January. I had my first 